So welcome everybody. We are um, on very different days today. So I am still rocking the hair from last week. Um, and Savannah has fresh hair, so her hair is still damp. So we're gonna teach some blow dry tips. And then I have this new obsession with um, like the style. I've seen this thing on TikTok and I'm like obsessed with every style that comes from it. So I wanted to walk you guys through that because I think it can make like a refresher for like everything you're doing um, for like almost every hairstyle. It's just got this little like pick me up mm -hmm. in it. So I will teach that and Savannah's gonna teach, um, you know, parts of her blow dry and kind of show you guys what she does and how she goes through different parts. Cause I was watching this girl, did you see the girl on TikTok? I think I sent you and she was like talking in her microphone and she's like, did you, did you see it? I don't know. Or did I send it to somebody else? And she's like, don't get curtain bangs. You told me about <laughs> it. She's like she's walking and her hair is just like, she's like, this is what it's supposed to look like. And she showed a picture of her stylist doing it. And she's like, and I bought a $50 round brush and blow dryer or something. I don't know what it was. And she's like, and it doesn't work. This is how it looks. Don't get them. <laughs> and I was like, no, we can help. <laughs> Let us help you. Um, so she was a really cute girl. And I think she could have rocked curtain bangs. It's just, Aww. don't give up on them. So I mean, curtain bangs for almost you. a year now. We can help you. <laughs> I know, right? Remember how much of a battle it is? Even for us though, to start learning of like, how to get it to flip right? To lay right, yeah. Yeah, it's such a, you know, fun You have to play with challenge. it for sure. But once you figure it out, I mean, you get in like the routine of knowing what it is that yeah. works for your hair. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so I wanna show you guys my little obsession lately. So you just go in and you take this um, part and you create like a really straight part in the front. Oh gosh, I'm so good at that. <laughs> okay, really straight part. Okay, in the very front. And then from there you can do like a million things. So one of the things I like is that it doesn't continue here. I want you to like just mess this up somehow, whether you put a little bit of a tease in it just to keep like a cushion there. You could do a little big time there. You could just spray in a little big time to like, it gets this like really cool 70s vibe. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. Remember how I was obsessed with fluffy hair and mm -hmm. now I'm like incorporating this into the fluff and I love it. Now, so there's so many things you can do from there, right? You can um, do all kinds of things. You can do space buns, you can do anything you want. Just start with this like straight part in the front. And so it just gives this like, I don't know what the look is, but I am obsessed with it. So it's a little elfy to me. Yeah. It reminds it, me of like, it does have a little bit of that. You can like do that little part thing and get that mm -hmm. out. Or you can do what I did yesterday, which I was prepping to make some videos. And I just took this little part and you take all of this back. I don't know if I left too much up front, we'll see. And you just start like midway up. You're not going all the way down to your ear here. You're just taking some up. Okay, so you go in and you twist. And as you twist, you kind of want the hair to twist with it. And then I go in because I have longer and I kind of put it over here. That's what I was trying to avoid. I was trying to do it all with one like quick swoop, mm -hmm. but that didn't work. And then I take the ends and just kind of wrap them around and tuck it back this in. This is a cute like holiday party or like holiday kind of yeah. look to it. I, what I like about this is like when you're on day like, what am I on, 12? <laughs> when you're on day whatever you're on, like something different, it's kind of fun. I think I made this bun too perfect. Yesterday I had it like way smaller. Mm -hmm. I'll probably mess with it when Savannah's... Um, doing her blow dry because I made it too perfect and too big. Um, so I don't know how much you guys can tell, but my hair is still pretty damp. It's probably, I still probably have like, it's probably about 80% dry right now, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, especially in the back area, it's pretty wet. Um, I had an hour drive here, but I pretty much left it um, dry except for, or sorry, wet except for my fringe area. Um, that's one little hack that we both like to do is if you make sure that like your face frame area is looking good, then mm -hmm. the rest of your hair, you can sometimes cheat if you don't have enough time or if you're running late or whatever. 
Um, for me specifically, I always make sure that I blow dry my bangs just because I know that if they air dry, it's gonna be a lot harder for me to get them to lay the way that I want them to. They'll start to have that like bump in the front here that doesn't have quite the like curtain look to them. So if you start off with really wet bangs and you dry them the way that you want to for the curtain look, then you don't have to worry about them starting to arch up like that uh, as they're drying. So um, the way that I do that, I know I've showed this on here a few times before, but I always take my very front area of my curtain bangs. I've still got quite a few longer pieces here, but I really focus in on the shorter pieces. And then I'll take my round brush and I pull it all forward like this. And then I will come in with the dryer from underneath and pull forward and down like this. And then once I get it pretty dry, I'll come in from the back and make sure that I'm getting um, the root part really nice and pressed down like this. And that's so important, you guys, to get that that curtain bank look that that girl was struggling with mm -hmm. is to really make sure that this dips here. So you can see the difference. Like I slept on this side, so this mm -hmm. side is not dipping and this side is dipping. Like this won't ever look like a good curtain bank. And that's what solves it is that behind or the pushing down pushing part of the blow down. however you do that. Honestly, whenever I'm doing my curtain bangs, you would think that you're focusing a lot on the ends of the hair because you want them to have that kind of flip yeah. out. I really only focus the dryer on like this section and then it naturally dries the ends as you're blow drying just because it is getting hit by air. But I really am just focusing in on those little hairs right there. And as long as you get those laying down then the rest of it lays pretty well. Um, if you do that and it starts to look kind of wonky, it happens to me a lot where I'll do that and then my ends are like kind of flipping out crazy or whatever. I just come in and keep my brush really vertical and pull down like this. And that really helps smooth out. And then I like to come over on top, kind of like I'm curling <laughs> and then just pull down like that. And that really helps elongate those pieces. Yeah, it's funny how that technique of curling really applies to a lot of the blow dry. Mm -hmm. It's, they're yeah. all very similar. Um, so from here, I would just go in, if I was doing a regular blow dry, I would do my curtain bangs first and get them how I, how I want. And then I would just split my hair down the center and then I would blow dry the back nape area and kind of work my way forward. Um, really similar to the curling technique. The reason that I do that is because this hair is like the most dense back here and it stays the wettest back here and it's hardest to get dry, I feel like. Yeah. If I focus in on the front too much before, then I have sopping wet hair back here and then I'm super dry up here and then I keep accidentally playing with it because yeah. it's a way it's way easier to blow dry the so front. So many people over blow dry the front because of that. And their front face frame, I would be like, you need to section this out of your blow dry period. You need to either do it first or section it out and do it last. But whatever it is, you have to treat it very different. Mm -hmm. You cannot just keep it in because they just blow dry that area so much. Over and over and just constantly brushing it even. Yeah, and strictly. overthinking it, like mm -hmm. the same way you kind of, kind of overthink curls sometimes. Like. Um, okay, so sometimes I will go in with the triangle brush and really stretch out this hair in the back if I'm getting some natural curl up in the back here. Yeah. That usually only happens to me if I allow my hair to air dry for a while before I start blow drying. Yeah. So it's not something I always do, but it is something that I like to do if I've either let my hair get too dry to be able to style it the way that I normally would with my paddle brush, or if I'm doing like touch-ups on day like three or four or whatever, yeah. if I, for some reason, had some kinks back here. Yeah. I love this trick. Like this is, I like this back lower part. I don't know, for me, it was just always something I didn't get to in my blow dryer or something. And so ever since we've started doing this trick, it's so much better on that underneath part. Cause I used to have just like little short pieces back here. And I was yeah. like, why is that? I could not figure it out. But another thing that I like to use the triangle brush for is these little hairs right in the front, how they will get curly like that. You take this. This is just in this trick. Oh, I love this. Push it back and then pull it forward. Yep. Oops, and then stretch, stretch it out. Yeah. And this little uh, triangle brush works really great for that. And pulling through all the way, I think, is important for this too. Not just leaving it there. Yeah. Because if you do that, it'll leave that dent in there. Yeah, it's so cute just to get close and then pull forward. What did you say? All the way to the end? Yeah. Yeah, just instead of me turning it like this and then leaving it like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
make sure that you actually pull through. Okay. Sorry. No, that's Ooh, fine. look how much better that made it look. So full. Can I have that? Yeah. <laughs> I have a blow dryer over here, but I'm gonna use yours. I don't know why. Oh my goodness. It's so crazy when you get like certain things that just really finish it out so much better. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I would just come in with my round brush. I like to um, turn it once right at the root, that way I get a little bit of lift, but I don't really focus in on it too, too much. So I want everyone to notice this, because I think this is such a key thing for, like, when you watch a stylist blow dry your hair versus how you blow dry your hair, a lot of us are like trying to recreate what the stylist does to get those things, but when you use the principles of like heating and cooling, what, what Savannah is doing is bringing this all forward for it to come back. So she's in essence creating the volume that way as well, or she's creating it, it to have fullness as opposed to just going straight down, right? But pushing forward really helps bring the hair so that when she brings it back, it's like creating that same kind of effect. Because the, cause the stylus can go up. Yeah, so right easy, and we're like, oh, it's and that, like, that so makes a hard position. So if you go forward, it's essentially the same kind of concept as your stylus going up or yeah. back. So the mm -hmm. faster your fan speed is, the higher the heat, those are the things that pull the moisture out of your hair faster. And what you don't want to do is over pull or over extract moisture from your hair. So the whole goal is when you get it there, stop. So the way you know is because your hair will be shiny at the end of the blow dry. So if your hair is still shiny, then you're doing a good job of blow drying. If your hair looks like it's been blow dried, like over dried, then you're over blow drying it. So when it looks like bushy or what are the other words almost like, like not shiny coarser yeah than normal. like i don't want to say fluffy because you can do a good fluffy blow dry but i just i like think your texture like, doesn't look like your hair texture yeah. it looks like a thicker texture yeah that's whenever you can yeah tell. that's when you're over blow drying so let's talk about the technique of blow drying the back i think it's so key so split your hair down the middle that that's the first thing i would do is i would pull everything forward and I would go in there first and I would just power blow dry that part. The other thing you can do is really take this, separate it, pull all this away and just work on that piece like Savannah was doing with the triangle brush. And when you start by going in on that, your whole blow dry is gonna be easier because your dreaded piece is done. So mm -hmm. if that's your dreaded piece, like start there and do that and get it out of the way. So you could do these two pieces, um, get them done and then you can, pull the rest forward and that back. And then you can start tackling. So what I mean by tackling is not hard. It's very easy. You're just going in, use the brush to your advantage, right? Pull the hair forward, use it like this to just push the hair forward. And that will straighten and blow dry. You don't need to do all these things like separate it perfectly, get this in here, do all that. Like save that for the salon. Try a home blow dry where you're just using the brush to pick up the hair like that and then once you get comfortable with that then you can start to utilize the shape of the round brush if you yes. want to have more of like the beveled ends or like the blowout look mm -hmm. that's that's easy to come once you figure out how to just maneuver the brush yeah i think you know um and then a lot of people ask me if i switch hands or not and mm -hmm. i kind of do whatever feels comfortable at that time i can blow dry with just picking up with my left and i mean even if you're if you're having trouble with it just do this one day just sit in there and figure out how to do this technique where you can pick up that hair without having to do all the arm gymnastics some something else that i remember having a conversation with jenny about actually was whenever i was trying to figure out how to do a round brush blowout on myself a couple years ago back before i even really thought about it mm -hmm. um i she was like well do you hold the dryer or the brush with your dominant mm -hmm. hand and I was like, oh, I never really thought about that. Yeah. And so then when the, once I figured out that I like to always hold the brush with my dominant hand, you then, can I, then I can, I had more control. Whereas some people felt like they had more control when they were holding the dryer with their dominant yeah. hand. So that being said, that kind of tells you if you would need to switch hands or not whenever you switch sides. Yeah. And I mean, getting good at both is makes everything easier. Mm -hmm. Like switch it up sometimes and have confidence in yourself to do both. Like it's just muscle memory. It's not, this is not like 
shooting a half court shot. Like mm -hmm, it's yeah. an easy thing to do. It's just, you know, just push it. Like all you have to do is learn to spin. I mean, even if you're sitting there watching TV and you learn to spin it like this, like learn your comfort, like just, I mean, try it one morning when you're, you know, try spinning back, try spinning forward and that's it. And then just, you know, all you're doing is teaching your hands to move like that. That's it. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to over spin the brush when you're blow drying. Like I see a lot of people wanting to spin it a lot. Yeah. And I, I'll do a whole blow dry without ever spinning my brush unless I want to pick up the very end. So like, you'll see, this is the most I do is just kind of do this half Turn rotation brush, yeah. and I utilize the edges of it. Cause all you need is the shape of the brush, not so much the Movement like whole thing like this, unless you're doing like the really like, and still, I think I can get a curl without having to rotate it all, mm -hmm. unless you're like unwinding it to right. let it sit and cool would be a time. But I'm not like huge on that because I think the blow dryer <laughs> takes so much more time <laughs> than just doing the iron. Um, but I do, I'll walk back up. So like as I get to the bottom, I'll walk back up and that's how I spin my brush. Mm -hmm. Do you spin the brush? Not off? usually. Occasionally at the ends, I'll spin a little bit, mm -hmm. just like you said. But that's whenever I'm really trying to get it picked back up. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. All right. I have to get this hair in order. I mean, it's <laughs> driving me crazy. So, you know, sometimes there's little tweaks that can go a really long way for your style like that. See, it was driving me crazy because it was kind of like, I don't know. It was crazy. And this is winging out. So I'm going to draw this down. So I try and teach that all the time for people that have, um, like this length of hair that wing out is like such a, problem child <laughs> when you're trying to like have your hair look good so just learning to draw down like that is so key um and then I would touch up a couple of these curls to just have more movement up here because it was looking a little flat up there mm -hmm. all right um thanks for joining us and uh hope you guys are all staying sane and all the chaos out there all the waves we're riding mm -hmm. just Picture them as rapids and ride them, ride them smoothly. Just, you know, paddle through. We got to row, row, row your boat. Yeah. Let's get through the rapids. Okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye.